Hi everyone, this is Lady Vintage Bags here. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a handbag review on my Louis Vuitton Montaigne 27cm clutch bag. So let's take a look at it, shall we? So this is what it looks like at the front. So as you can see, it's got epi leather in the black. It's got gold hardware with a beautiful Louis Vuitton logo here in the circle. And if we open it up inside, so it's leather lined. We have a heat stamp here in red. So this is Louis Vuitton made in France. We've got one made compartment and one zippered compartment here. And we've got this beautiful zipper pull head there too. So if I open that compartment up, so you can see it's got this grayish color to it. And that's because unfortunately the original lining had peeled and become sticky. So I had to clean it out and that's what it looks like now. And that's what the main compartment looks like. There is a date code on the bag and you'll find it in this inner corner here. So if the bag was facing me, it'll be in the front right hand corner. You can't really see it because it's just embossed into the leather. It's got no color to it at all. And this is what the back looks like. So it's got one slip compartment here. So the same thing happened to the back compartment it became sticky and peeled so I had to clean it out so that's why it looks like this now. So you may notice I've got these two screwed in D-rings here. So I have altered the bag so please ignore those for now. We'll get to the story about those in just a minute. And that's what it looks like on the side, on the bottom. And it does have glazing on it. So I'll just tell you my purchase story with this handbag. So I purchased it in 2018 and at the time that was my first year purchasing luxury handbags and I'd bought a few monogram pieces but I'd never ventured out of monogram thus far. So I was just scrolling through eBay and just seeing what I could get for a bargain because I knew I wanted something that um, wasn't going to break the bank and possibly something that I could play around with because I had recently joined a lot of Facebook handbag rehab groups and been watching some YouTube tutorials and how to alter your bag and I was keen on seeing what my crafty skills can enable me to do. So I came across this bag and I was immediately drawn to this LV logo and it was priced at under 200 Australian dollars on eBay from a Japanese reseller and at the time eBay was not collecting GST so I did not have to pay that 10% tax plus it was free shipping and around that time I was getting a lot of 10% off vouchers on eBay so that just made things even sweeter. So I purchased this bag and because it was a clutch bag I thought I have to do something to it to make it crossbody because I am a crossbody girl even though it's beautiful as a clutch I don't walk around like this in my everyday life I'm actually a really casual person 99.99% .99 of the time so after watching some YouTube tutorials and tutorials on Facebook I decided to buy a leather hole punch which you can easily find on eBay or Amazon and I purchased these screw in D rings. So this leather hole punch you can find inexpensive on eBay and Amazon. So I'm just going to insert some prices here that you'll find. You can also get it from local hardware stores too. So you don't have to buy it online. And these screw in D rings you can also find easily on eBay or Amazon. And I'll just insert pictures of the current prices that you'll probably see it at. You can buy it in different pack sizes like pack of two, pack of four, pack of six, etc. It does also come in silver color and it also does come in a triangular shape rather than this D-ring shape. So what I had to do was punch a hole in it. Now in terms of lining up where I wanted the hole, in my head I had an idea of not wanting these D-rings to stick out too far above the bag when wearing it with a strap. So I kind of just measured the height of the D-ring but I forgot to take into account that there is a line of stitching in here. So my very first hole you may see that I have actually punctured a line of stitching. So that did not work out very well for me and I panicked. So I quickly got some clean nail polish just to paint over the stitches that I broke, just to stick them down to the leather. And then I screwed this together. It's two parts. It's one part here. And the second part is this side, which is a flathead top. 
and I screwed it tightly over the stitches. Then when it came to doing the second side, I just raised it a little bit high so that I wasn't going to puncture the stitch line. So that was one mistake that I recommend you do not make. So please check for any stitch lines before punching a hole. But then once the hole was punched, all you do is just get the two parts and just screw them in with each other by hand. And then you can use a flathead screwdriver just to secure it for those final turns to make it tight. And there you are. You've turned a crutch into a crossbody bag. Now I'm just going to show you how I wear this with a few different straps. So starting off with a thin gold chain. This is crossbody length. So this one has a small lobster claw. So I'm just going to attach it to this side and then attach the other side over here. And there it is as a crossbody bag or as a long shoulder bag. So that looks quite nice, doesn't it? The great thing about this particular strap is that you can feed it through the D-ring completely and you can turn this into a double strap short shoulder bag. So now I'm going to have both lobster claws attached to the same D-ring. Now I've got a double strap bag and on my shoulder and that looks nice and elegant. So if the bag's not too heavy, this won't dig into your shoulder. So the next strap I'm going to use is a thicker gold chain bag. Sorry, thicker gold chain strap. And this one's a bit shorter than the previous one. So here it is as a crossbody. So as you can see, this strap is shorter. Last time the crossbody was down here, now it's up here. So this is a bit more of a trendier look. And if I wanted to do a shoulder bag, it sits her up there. So that looks nice as well. So as you can see, gold chains, whether thin or thick, go well with this bag. So the next look I'm going to show you is a faux leather bag, faux leather bag strap. So this is an adjustable strap with these clasps. So there it is as a shoulder bag. So this is a nice more casual look. And there it is crossbody. If I wanted to go for a shorter shoulder look, then I'm just simply going to shorten this strap. And there it is, is a shorter shoulder bag. So this is great if you're having more items in the bag and it gets heavier, so that way it doesn't really dig into your shoulder as much and it's more comfortable. And the final strap I'm going to show you is this Vachetta strap. This is a generic one I got from eBay from a seller based in China. This is like the Speedy B because it has three parts to it so you can make it long or really short. So as you can see the Vachetta does go nicely with the epi leather. So there it is as a long shoulder crossbody bag. If I wanted to do a short shoulder with this machete strap, it'll just look like that. Now the interesting thing about this bag is the configuration of the date code. So during the era that this bag was made, the convention of the date code was to have three or four numbers, then followed by two letters. 
So the date code of this bag reads 9001VI. So the VI is the location which is made in France, which is confirmed by the heat stamp here. And the convention is the first two numbers are the year and the second two numbers are the month. And that's for this particular era that this bag was made. As time went by, they changed the way they structured the date codes. So the digits that represent the month and the year changed over time. But this particular time, it was the first two digits was the year and the second lot or the third and fourth digits were the month. So it was 90 for the year, so 1990, and 01 for the month, so January 1990. So this is a really old bag. So here we are, 2021. So this is 31 years old. Now let's see what fits. So full size wallet. As you can see, this is a fat one. Lip product, pen, phone, hair clip, does it snapshot? Yes it does. So that's what it looks like. And I'll just show you with the crossbody strap or the shoulder strap. So that's what it looks like full. So it doesn't stick out way too much at all. If you were to swap out your full-size wallet for a smaller one, you could do that. There we go. And you still have lots of room. Now, in terms of pros and cons, so a con for this bag is that it originally is just a clutch. So it's not versatile in how you can wear it. Another con for the bag is that the interior pockets do become sticky and peel over time, so they do need to be cleaned out. Um, in terms of pro, this is an all-weather bag. Rain, hail or shine, you can take it out. No problem, there's no vachetta. And another pro is that this is a really timeless looking bag. This transcends many decades fashion trends. This looks like it could be part of a recent collection. This is not a trendy bag at all. It's really quite classic looking. Now in terms of colors it's available in and current prices. So this bag, to my knowledge, is only available in epi leather and not any of the canvas prints. And it comes in three different sizes. So this is the larger size, which is 27 centimeters. The middle size is 23 centimeters and the smallest size is only 20 centimeters. And the epi leather colors I've seen it in are black, Kenyan fawn, which is a shade of brown, Toledo blue, green, red, and the gold color. Now I purchased this for less than 200 Australian dollars. Now it wasn't in the best condition, keep that in mind, because the snap was a bit weak. And I had to look at some YouTube tutorials on how to help that. And I found one that said drop hot glue in there, which I did, and I do believe it did help. And the bottom is bulging. It's lost its structure. It's not supposed to stick out like that. It's supposed to be the opposite and fold in. In terms of my glazing, the glazing's pretty good, except for up here where it's cracked. But otherwise down here, it's pretty good. And because my bag's lost structure, it no longer stands up on its own. Now, current prices I can find are ranging between 300 to about seven, eight hundred dollars, and that depends on condition as well. You do have to keep that in mind. And because there are many different sizes available, and with the current mini and nano bag trend, some of the smaller sizes are more expensive than the bigger sizes. So let me know in the comments down below, is this a bag you'd buy? Or is this a bag that you've seen before? So I haven't seen anyone rocking this bag on their YouTube, on their Instagram. I've only seen people selling it, but no one actually modeling it or owning it. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know. Have a nice day and goodbye.